What's up guys, Charles here with D2IPDesigns.com. I'm bringing you another tutorial. Today is going to be a Cinema 4D tutorial and I want to cover uh, materials. Um, this tutorial is going to be a bit more for the newbies, but I think some more advanced people could probably learn something from this because I'm going to be showing you guys how to also apply the materials to objects and different techniques. And um, I, I think even more advanced people will be able to get something out of this. So anyway, let's go ahead and create a new material by hitting create um, there there's already some presets in cinema 4d um, which you can check out um, some of them are pretty damn good actually um, so anyway let's go ahead and create new material open this up obviously color is pretty self-explanatory I'm not really going to cover that but um, specular what that is is it basically picks up light so if you have a light in the scene um, it's just going to pick up on that and um, it's, it's going to leave a, a shimmer on your object. I don't know that shimmer is exactly like the right word. Um, specular color, that's pretty self-explanatory. Change this and that change the color of the specular. Um, you know, glow, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, reflection, I want to go over reflection because this one really confuses a lot of people. I know it confused me when I first started. Um, this will not reflect lights. I, I always thought you just put a light in the scene and it starts reflecting. That's not how it works. It does not reflect lights. It reflects um, objects around your um, object. You know, so let's go ahead. Why am I creating a new material? Uh, delete. Anyway, let me go ahead and just put a sphere out here. And I'm just going to drag the material on it. I'm going to delete this light. So if I render a scene out, as you can see, it shows nothing. Well, the reason, be, the reason is is because we have um, the reflection all the way up, and it, there's nothing in the scene for it to reflect, so it's just blank. There's nothing there. So let's go ahead and put a floor, and I'll grab out an area light, turn that like this, bring it up some. And let's put some light over here. Turn that down a bit so it's not so bright. And I'll just put something on the floor here. Um, guess like a blue color. It doesn't really matter. Anyway. And so now, as you can see, it's reflecting the top. And it's reflecting the bottom. The bottom is green, so the bottom of this is being reflected and the top is being reflected so that's why you get this strong contrast if we turn down the reflection a bit um, it, you, you'll see it won't be so strong actually that's not hardly showing up at all now um, let's add a fresnel you can hit texture fresnel and um, it looks pretty good I like the way fresnel looks there you go so you can see you get this nice soft um, reflection going on and um, obviously this is not a really great you know, lighting setup. I just want to show you uh, how the reflections work and how it reflects things around the object. So anyway, now luminance, again, that's probably pretty self-explanatory, although not so much. Um, the way luminance works is um, obviously it makes the object kind of bright and everything. But um, I thought you just put it on and automatically it will start, you know, like glowing and um, casting light on objects around it and that's not how it works because as you can see if we render it out it's just a white ball so if we want it to cast um, luminance on objects around it what we need to do is we don't have to crank up the brightness but I like to crank it up a bit so it's more visible um, go to effects and global illumination and I'm just going to turn this down so it uh, renders out quicker and then there you go now it's actually casting light so that's how luminance works um, let's see bump bump you're gonna need to um, put like noise or some sort of texture on it so let's go ahead and do noise and then you can adjust the strength of it and then we can do something with this let's go ahead and scale it up more now let's go ahead and put, oh, it's already on the sphere, what am I doing? And if we render that out, oh, okay, need a light. 
There we go. So as you can see, it's all bumpy. Um, that's probably should scale that down. Whoop. Yeah, let's try something like that. So I mean, obviously that doesn't look very good, but um, depending on the pattern you use for the bump, you know, it can get really good effects with it. And uh, anyway, uh, transparency you can do um, glass using transparency and the refraction and stuff that kind of warps um, everything so if you're looking through this um, whatever's behind it will look kind of warped um, that's basically it I'm just kind of going over the basics of all these settings and then um, I want to show you something else let's let's go ahead and delete that I'm gonna grab out a cube I'm going to delete the light as well, and I'm going to turn off in, uh, global a global illumination. Excuse me. Um, let's go ahead and load a texture. So texture, load image, and let's go back. Uh, textures. Let's find something here. Um, let's do this one, and just drag it on the cube. Now, let's go and put it on cubic does that look okay? Eh, it's not the best but it'll work um, now sometimes things will be too large or too small for an object so here's how you fix that you gotta select this up here the texture and then you gotta hold down control and click on the object and then right here you're gonna click on this um, use texture axis mode and then now, if we move it, you can see it moves the textures. You can do up and down as well. And you can rotate it. And you can scale it. Like that. Of course, we don't want to do that because that doesn't look right. So anyway, um, I don't know that too many people know about that tool. And it can definitely be very useful. So anyway, um, this was just kind of a thing I wanted to go over, give you a basic idea of um, textures. I'm going to show you a few. Before I go, I'm going to show you a few more techniques as to how to apply the textures. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and grab out a cube again. Let's say you want um, the main color of this to be this greenish blue here. Um, and then you want this side and this side to be a different color. So let's go ahead and make this um, eh, red. We'll do red. Um, let's, let's make this side and this side red. So what we're going to do is make it editable. Go to your um, polygon mode. Select this side. Shift, select this side. Right click on it and hit apply. And now, as you see, you've got everything green but the two sides here. Um, next thing, let's go ahead and delete the cube. Let's go to MoGraft, MoText, and then let's go ahead and extrude this a bit, or quite a bit, I guess. Caps, fillet cap, fillet cap, and now let's say we want the base color to be this and then we want the edges to be red so go ahead and drag out the red this one will be um, go ahead and click on this and then under selection type in capital R1 and then under selection type in capital R2 and there you go um, let's see what else can we do um, Uh, da, 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 da. trying to think here. If we drag this out, we can do C1, and as you can see, C1 um, changes the face color, and then we can drag this out and do R1, R2, and we can drag this out and do C2. 
And there you go. And then new material, we'll do, we'll just do gray, dark gray. Drag it out there. You're gonna have to drag it all the way to the back. And then there you go. You end up with a multicolored text. So the faces are um, this bluish green. The um, fillet caps are red and then the center is uh, a dark gray. So that's how you can apply materials in different ways. And again, I hope this has helped you guys. Um, if you guys want me to do any tutorials, um, go ahead and request them in the comments and um, I'll see about doing it. Hopefully this um, basic um, material and applying materials tutorial has helped you guys. And uh, I'm gonna be out of here now, peace.